Welcome to this course on space planning. Open Buildings Designer has a space tool that is used for space planning activities. With this tool, you can draw, locate, identify, and label individual spaces, such as rooms, or logically related spaces, such as departments, that are identified by a name and or a number. They can overlap to contain an area of multiple spaces. For instance, several spaces might fall within a larger department space. Spaces can be 2D or 3D. 2D spaces are basically based on a closed shape. They could be used in a 2D drawing model as well as a 3D model for the purpose of tracking area and other associated data with the space, such as room finishes. They would include a ceiling height value that would define the three-dimensional range of the space. A 3D space is actually created from a solid. The space tool would then convert that 3D solid into a 3D space, and these are often used for the energy analysis workflow. Spaces can also be either associative or non-associative. So associative spaces are created when you use the flood boundary tool. Now, once a space is created with associativity, if the bounding objects, such as a wall, is moved, then the space shape outline would redefine based on the new location of the wall and the area measurements would update. Non-associative spaces are created when the space is physically drawn or a existing shape is selected but they are useful when you need a high degree of control of the space shape and the area measurement. For instance, when you might be measuring to different surfaces, such as face of glass on one side and center line of a wall on another. In addition, there is also a space planning tool in Open Buildings Designer that can actually be used to import and place to program spaces from an external data file, such as an Excel file. So we're going to go through these different functionality through a series of videos for this course. And we're going to start in this video with some basic setup. So I've opened Open Buildings Designer. I'm going to set my workspace to building examples. This is the delivered workspace. And I'm going to set my work set to either the multi-use retail building neutral metric or the multi-use retail building US, depending which units you would like to work in. And then we're going to create a new file. So I'm just going to select new file. I want to make sure that my seed is set to the project or the work sets design seed. And we're going to call this file a underbar loft layout C. So in this particular example building, there is a ground floor grocery store, and above that are three stories of loft spaces. And we're going to start by laying out one of these loft floors. So let's go ahead and save that. That should open the new file. Now a building and floor grid system has already been set up for this project, as well as we already have a core model based on the grocery store below. So I'm going to go ahead and set the floor selector to the loft floors, and I'm going to select floor one. And that will set our ACS at the proper elevation and also show as the grid that's been established for the building. I'm also going to come down to my snaps and set my default snap to multi-snap one. Once I've done that, I'm going to select control F on my keyboard that will save settings so that the next time I open this file, it will be set up exactly like this. Next, I'm going to attach that core model so that we have something to start working around as we lay out the, the loft spaces. So I'm going to come up to the References, pull down, and select Attach Reference. 
in the Designs folder. I'm going to select the A Loft Core DGN. I'm going to set my attachment method to coincident. And go ahead and open. And there is the core model attached. Change my display style here. I've got a couple example display styles set up here. I'm going to select. Select that in the plan as well. Make it a little easier to see the spaces as we lay them out. And again, a control F. We'll make sure that those display style settings are saved. Now, before we start actually placing spaces, there are some preferences in the workspace preferences that affect the placement of spaces. So let's go take a look at those. I'm going to go to File and then Settings and go to Preferences. I'm under User Preferences. So these are User Preferences, and these will be under the Building Architectural category. Now this determines how areas are displayed on our spaces. So by default, it is set to use working units. Now if my master units is feet and I want my area displayed in square feet, then that's fine. But for instance, if you're working in metric and your master units are millimeters, this would mean that your areas would display in square millimeters. You might want them in square meters, for instance. So we're going to check that off so that we then have the option to control the unit of measure. And then from here, you, from the pull down, you can select the unit. And I am working in feet and inches, so I'm going to select feet. And then if I check this box, I can also control the unit of display, how you display that unit of measure. You can see I've got different options depending on the unit of measure you selected and your regional data set. You may have different options there. And I'll just select one of those. We can also auto increment numbers. So when we're placing spaces, a series of spaces, that's what we're going to do in the next video, they will auto increment the room number as you place them. And so the default here is to increment it by one, but you do have some control on that. And in this case, we're going to lay out loft units on one side of a corridor where we may want all odd numbers. And then we're going to lay them out on another side of the corridor where we may want all even numbers. And so I'm actually going to change this to two so that we increment by two. And then the space shape that gets placed in the 3D model can actually be offset just slightly from the floor level so that it displays above anything that's on the floor. And that is set to one inch. There's also an option to allow flooding to search outside the view window when you flood a space. We're going to leave that ticked off. It just means that whatever you're flooding has to be in your view. You have to be able to see it, but it will make it more efficient as it's searching for the area to flood. And that sets up the preferences that we need. I'm going to select OK and go back to the file. So we're now all set up, and in the next session, we'll start laying out some loft spaces. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.